Hey guys, welcome to our first podcast. This is going to be on Silicon Dynasty. I have my two co-hosts here, John and Alex. Uh, how are you doing, What's John? What's going on, guys? <laughs> uh, I'm doing I'm doing all right. Um, cool, cool. Had a yeah, had a not I don't know. Had a rough Christmas to be honest. My grandma passed away, but okay. um, I um, I don't know. Um, I uh, things are looking up. Uh, that, that's that's others, good. Sorry, sorry to hear that, bro. Yeah. I hope you f- hope you feel better. Um, how you doing, Alex? Doing much better than John here. Uh, condolences to your family. Um, but yeah, I'm doing pretty well right now. Uh, happy to be here and looking forward to this tournament. Uh, I dive right honestly, into this. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually heavily oh, yeah. looking forward to this tournament. It's definitely going to be a sick time with you guys. It's going to be so fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so stupid. Anyways, yeah. uh, speaking of this tournament, uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get into this. Uh, this is going to be the Silicon Dynasty tournament, as you guys can see in the background here. Uh, I'll throw up uh, some stuff that we can look at. Uh, this is going to be hosted by Eminence, which is really cool because I haven't been to an Eminence event. I've done the Mox Masters, and I think you did too, right, John? Yeah, I've yeah. I played, I played the played, last Mox Masters uh, too. Oh, you did I too, Alex. In, okay. I played in one that I made top 16 and another one where I went 0-1 drop because <laughs> I, oh, I had stuff that I had to take yeah, care yeah, yeah. of. That's right. Yeah. Okay. How did you do on the other one, Alex? Uh, I did... I did okay. Um, I made a really bad misplay in round one, uh, which ended up like really haunting me because I lost out in tiebreakers for top sixteen. Ooh, yeah. I I brought Winota and then vowed to not bring Winota to uh, big tournaments for a little bit because <laughs> I just got <laughs> yeah. I got kind of a slightly spite played in some of the yeah. games and like politicking over webcam is not the same as politicking in person but i'm glad this one this one is in person which is cool uh yep. it's gonna be in san jose uh california which we're from cali if you guys didn't know we, we mm. run we also run the cali cali, cali magic discord so if you want to join that uh feel free to shoot over to uh discord I'll, I'll put my stuff and information down you can message me yeah just message um, jesse and uh yeah it's gonna be january 14 to 15 so dude like about two weeks from now which is awesome um and it is a 160 i believe it was 140 and it got increased uh full proxy friendly which is freaking amazing for a cdh oh, that's event great. i gotta play another so boy. nice <laughs> oh yeah yeah john gets to play another boy, which is uh, great uh it's gonna be a 5k i think it's gonna be sponsored by moxfield i believe that's why they increase it i remember yeah mentioned. yeah they, they increased the player cap and the price pool okay yeah. yeah i heard it was moxfield maybe i'm wrong but i, don't I think know. it was moxfield. Mox, yeah. moxfield is definitely yeah it's at the bottom if you look at their sponsors yeah if you're, if you're in the area too uh space for casual games come on in join join in the fun yeah there's gonna be a bunch of space and i know that there's a bunch of people that are showing up and uh, are gonna just be there and play for fun it's gonna be like just a cool environment to be in and around which i'm excited about because i know that after the tournament's over i'm gonna be jamming with buddies and whatnot it's gonna be right right uh the but i think the casual is gonna be your best bet if you weren't able to get a ticket because unfortunately it looks like they're sold out as of today. Yeah, I think so. it is sold out um, as of today. You could get on a waitlist though, so if you guys are interested in it, you could always message them and ask for a waitlist. Um, the scheduling I heard is really good for these. Apparently, Pun City ran really well and ended early, which is important because uh, we got to get home and it's like six hours away. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we might be flying though, so we'll, we'll see. But it's it does yeah. end pretty early uh, for the second day, which is awesome, and I'm glad that it's not going to nice. go like yeah. super long, like I've gone with the CCU event that we went to. Oh, <laughs> that was an endurance yeah. run. That was uh, an endurance. Uh, so I hope I hope this one ends a little oh, faster. Oh, and I heard like the the last big tournament uh that was in paper what you call it what, what event Oko? was it, it Okotober? Was, yeah Okotoberfest. yeah like november fest no november fest as we like to call it because <laughs> they had it in november but yeah uh yeah. so this is a pretty cool thing if you're interested there's they have the stuff online on eminence uh, dot events you can check it out but uh we're gonna go into um what do you guys uh what do you guys expect to see at these tournaments uh what are you expecting to see john well, if my predictions mean anything from what I have seen here on the West Coast and a variety of like places as well as what I've seen online and people that I expect to like maybe make in the trip, um, 
Uh, I would say that, like, at first, at least, I expect to be saying uh, Blue Farm is by far the most played deck. Yeah, um, oh, deck that is... Deck. Yeah, deck Third is incredible. Today, aren't we? Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, deck is incredible, and at pretty much, like, all the tournaments I've been seeing all around, not only online, but a lot of our in-person tournaments as well, or, excuse me, our uh, LGS tournaments as well, um, we've just like been seeing blue farm blue extremely yeah. saturated uh, it's it's been to the point where you see blue farm probably like three times as much as the next most popular deck yeah. and and there's usually like three or four that will make a top 16 um and but like outside of that i expect to see a fair amount of grixis core stuff um right, right. as the turbo ad nauseum strategy is like fairly popular over here on the west coast um definitely like, is we are definitely more yeah turbo. decks like Najila, decks like um like armix crom uh, other rog sai niche sure. stuff rog sai um not niche stuff but rog sai <laughs> but <Right. laughs> uh, <laughs> um, i expect to see a bunch of stuff like that um then i also expect to see a fair amount of like people on evolution strategy decks okay i uh, expect to see some people playing classic thrasios timna probably not as much as in other tournaments um and i think we'll like... see i think we'll see less of that to be honest i don't think that yeah. deck is as popular this part of the country i don't think yeah. it is either i think we'll still see enough that it's like worthy to mention um I think we'll see a fair amount of Winota players, as I know there's like a fair amount here. Um, then I think we're probably going to be, I don't know, uh, not seeing very much stacks. Mm -hmm. You'll probably run into people playing, you know, whatever their X random favorite stacks a deck is. Mm -hmm. Maybe like every two and a half games, you'll c come into like one pilot. Um, that is kind of my. That's how I'm feeling. That's what I've been seeing in the last few tournaments yeah. and whatnot. What, what, um, yeah. What have you noticed at our our like local meta, Alex? What have you been seeing? So my predictions going into this are pretty straightforward. Um, just from looking at what people have said online, they're you know I'm not exactly gonna say like oh you know X influencer popularized this, but definitely there seems to be a perception that Blue Farm. Rogsai, Winota, and Najila are the decks to beat right now. Therefore, right. other people are saying that. I've been seeing this so often that I don't really care if that's necessarily true or not in terms of win rate, but in terms of popularity, that's what I'm going to expect. And so I think you should be teching for those decks and expecting to play against those a lot. Like John said, there's going to be some other stuff. I definitely expect to see evolution sort of strategies around. I expect to see decks yeah. like Krark, Sakashima, um, yeah, it's you popular know, here on the know, West Coast. Know how to beat that deck. Kark you Sokka just is, you yeah. don't let them play. You just kill the Kark constantly, <laughs> and you, really you yeah. just you just try to stop them from playing. Because when don't you don't, then you can't do anything to stop them. Yeah, that, that uh, is it's, true. It's fairly binary there. I know. Um, I think I would think that Ken is coming down. He was at the CCU tournament, so yeah, I, I would, expect I at least one person to be around. playing this deck. And uh, it's, I, I it's know good. Yeah, it's I fairly know popular. popular. It's yeah. It's same with Winota. Winota is also pretty popular, and yeah. it comes it comes yeah. out from the woodworks. I what? I do think that Winota's uh, there's a lot of players that just like hop on Winota that are newer, and it's it's kind of an easily abusable deck. If you deck know might not have it. the best conversion rate. It, yeah, um, it might it might though if it's very if the meta is super turbo y just... Maybe it will, yeah. but it's... And if people are, like, greedy. But right now, right. Um, people people have been very mean to Winota. Um, right. People have, like, seen what it's capable of, and it's a deck that, for if you're playing, reason. you can expect yeah. to face... Yeah, for good reason. Deck's extremely good when it's allowed to do what it can do. Right. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, what else? I, 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 I want to mention... I wanted to mention the Malcolm decks just briefly uh, before... Malcolm's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say, like like grixis malcolm and teamer malcolm i definitely expect to see those around it's not it's not as popular as it was a few months ago but it's still gonna be fairly well represented i think yeah it's a deck that should be on your radar something that i kind of want to say as like final note something that's like i don't know something that's very popular i've noticed in socal as well or like is it core decks uh, and then it's not necessarily like 
is it mid range or is it turbo? Is it X mm -hmm. like turbo like Crick says? But there are a lot of decks that are going to be playing blue red um, that are going to be like fringe or more I don't know decks that you wouldn't like expect to see as much um, that aren't as popular elsewhere. Is it seems to be a popular color combination uh, and just like blue red X decks that are doing things in their own way, whether that be like Malcolm Kettis or yeah. uh, Rog Thrasius, which we've also seen, not seen at our LGS, but seen at like other tournaments around. I think it's a solid deck, not gonna lie. I like it. Yeah, I like um, it. Cool. but yeah, I've I've noticed, uh, yeah, blue, red, X mid-range decks uh, have been pretty popular up. down here. Are, yeah. yeah, are pretty popular down here, that especially and, like, in comparison to other places. <laughs> yeah yeah blue farms popular everywhere but like in terms of our meta i'd say like i notice a lot of yeah blue red x and sometimes the x is black and you are more turboy or the x is like green and you're doing like a different strategy you're doing like malcolm tana you're doing rog thrasios uh, a little bit of polymorph stuff with that and i've, I've noticed some like urza decks here and there popping up Pe people are gonna bring also like their they're, they're little stuff. pet decks yeah. that they love yeah. and it's understandable it's gonna come like, up. overall yeah. like th this format has a pretty diverse meta so it does, we can yeah. talk about like what the subsections are and you know what's the outsized popularity when we're looking at the population as a whole right. but there's a pretty broad spectrum of what people are going to bring and don't forget that yes people are looking to win but they also want to play strategies that they feel comfortable messing around with and right. i have practiced the play patterns with a lot so There's... i would expect if people are playing some of these uh you know less popular i guess or like less considered to be top tier decks um they still will probably bring them just because yeah they're comfortable with it and it makes more sense than picking up something new and trying to yeah. get to that same level or outperform right right yeah it definitely it definitely favors you to always bring the deck you're comfortable on and i i think uh that'll get us into uh what what decks are we bringing i i'm gonna start off and show you guys the the brew that i was talking about before yeah uh, this is shivers brew we'll see you, baby. and uh this is what show i'm doing it. show it the chapel <laughs> the chapel oh, yeah. of duplicated from shiver himself uh anyways this is my version of uh the, the chapel as we we call it and uh it's the mardu jessica timna so we got the the timna for the grind and jessica you know for the outlet and the just overall hate also on creatures <laughs> yeah also more grind it it has a lot of uh, cool little synergies this deck is like the epitome of like mini combos within each other like everything so just flows combos. everything just flows cool. so nicely and it's just felt so good recently uh you will probably notice that i am on 23 lands uh it's okay <laughs> you know it's, um, I, oh, don't, Jesse! don't 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 What's run going away on? don't run away now I'm, 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 i promise i promise it actually works uh i was scared too <laughs> i was scared of cutting lands uh we did the math actually completely fine to run this lands we're also playing bolus of citadel given the deck, don't, given don't the deck. Lands and, no, and no, no 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 yeah don't, uh. <laughs> don't at all uh but yeah given given the deck when you're playing citadel you need to be running this this land count um you also get to play because of jessica a lot more combos that you don't have like say if i was playing chrome or some other value piece uh abdel yeah, Abdel. Any this is an outlet, so you can start comboing with Dockside and uh, Cloudstone, Cloudstone Curio. Yeah. And you have uh, Magda to fetch Citadel or Curio. You have Ranger to grab like Hope or Sarah Ascendant or Esper. Like it's just all these little things. Oswald, Oswald's awesome in the stack. Uh, Oswald, Oswald yeah. will fetch any of defense your rocks grid. up defense into. Grid. Yeah, you can hit Defense yeah, or Grid. Your... Or, or you can go to grinding or... station, or you can get a wish claw, or you can the, get a portable the deck is hole. The epitome yeah. of like having like layered combos. Oh, too. it's just um, it's so and the so. The thing is, fun. it's like I don't know. So many of these cards like look like they're not great, but they all work together in this cohesive shell so well. Yeah, yeah. But it's like this deck is terrifying. And I was I, playing. I'm uh, excited to see you play it. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna the welder combos together. Welder with goblin engineer. This 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 will fetch you the bolus of citadel and this will bring it out on turn two if you can get that combo off really fast it's nice 
Uh, so there's Abdel a lot of talk said. about like there's a lot of talk about turbo ad nauseum for Mardu, right? right but yeah. honestly, with the deck building considerations you have here, is this honestly maybe more of like a turbo citadel deck? Uh, yeah, so I find myself, yeah, I definitely find myself winning with Citadel almost as often as Nas. Um, and a big win con I noticed the big reason to play this deck over like a mat, uh, or sorry, a blue farm or a Timna, uh, Timna Krom is that you get uh, a lot of combos that win through like a lot of like just BS pieces, like yeah, just and they're really compact too. Very compact combos yeah, that just win just like, a lot of stuff. Not BS, not just like hate pieces, but also let you just like grind through those board states where you know there's like a ton of blue interaction. interaction in yeah, hands, this, this and you're like, okay, well nobody can do anything, but I can slowly like put my Oswald down, get right. to this like thing, get to this uh, defense grid here, or I can like Slam get to these two. my. <laughs> to my magda dock side to cheat out stuff there's a lot right. of ways that you can um like cheat out wins in stalled board states with mm -hmm. Rhystics and mystics which is uh, something that i see a lot here in and it can, it i mean can, i just see it a lot in general but you yeah. have a lot of options to navigate the you can game. also win pretty fast i'd say it's a since your combo density is a, a lot higher you have i think a, it feels like a pretty good nos um, I don't know if it's better than Blue Forms, but I think it's better than Blue Forms, uh, at least from I, I think I it's about the same. About uh, the same? With, okay. With how it is right now, I think it's... it's I don't play Blue Form very often, so yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's so. probably about the same. But I've been loving um, this deck. I just love all the mini synergies. It's definitely probably one of the mo more complicated decks I've played. Probably one of the mo most complicated in terms of all the like mini hard. synergies. Yeah. <laughs> very hard to like sequence and do that stuff, but it just feels... It, it definitely rewards you for playing it correctly which is very nice uh that's what you'll notice about a lot of very good decks is that they reward players the more that they put into it and i think this is one of the decks that rewards you almost the most in terms of like putting some work into it um yeah no this is this has been awesome oh yeah also buy a tithe right now it's a reserveless <laughs> card and oh my god i spent 22 dollars on a card that literally grabs me two lands but this is one of the coolest cards in the deck anyways <laughs> let's uh, crack by a what, what, are, what are you playing not convincing people well to, yeah oh god speaking you, of not convincing people well to what, play a deck yeah uh playing, yeah John? um <laughs> nothing uh don't bump nothing play. You're playing Blue Form, form right? No. Yeah. yeah. Right? Is it? Is it right? Blue no. Form? No. Is it? Oh. Oh, God. Oh, what I've is this? the dark side. <laughs> yes. I'm playing my beautiful baby. Oh, no. Rock to Vesh Turbo Stacks. Yep. Oh, yeah. You know what time it is. This is this is your, like, experimental list right now, though, right? Um. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. my list Um. that I have been trying out to get a little bit better into what I'm seeing, like, the meta go towards right now uh mm -hmm. it's a less it's a little bit less um soul guide lantern i love that yeah, card yeah yeah it's a little bit less good into like open fields where people will just be playing a bunch of random stuff um but i think this version of the deck is like considerably better into grixis than whoa whoa, whoa. no planar void <laughs> no i no, you're um, so bad I think Soul Guide is actually better. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I made the swap there, but um, uh, yeah, I yeah. I, agree. Um, this deck has, uh, I don't know. Yeah, th this version of the deck is a little bit tighter focused on dealing with the things that I like expect to be seeing. Right. I'm still running a lot of board wipes because I expect Timna decks to be everywhere. Um, right. As they always are, is because I mean Timna is kind of just like the best commander in the format <laughs> yeah the colors are good uh, along with like yeah the just draw over over the just course. ask for nothing right yeah. yeah um so i'm still playing a lot of board wipes not playing like curse totem anymore because i don't think it's um i think you already bully the green decks enough. yeah i noticed um, that too when playing this deck you really bully creature decks and curse totem like yeah it's lots better strong. utilize on jessica yeah yeah or uh soul guide or just like a lot of other stuff to stop the more like we said we're, we're expecting to see some some more uh turbo turbo stuff but not even just turbo just like uh grixis and grixis x plus you know uh, i think in general it makes sense too because when 
honestly, with the land destruction package and all that going on, right. you do actually have a, like an inherently good matchup into a lot of these um, sort of like slower decks or right. that are like looking to capitalize on the mid game to pull ahead, right? Yeah. Because you're just saying the back so far. A lot of these decks are built with the assumption that you know, okay, I'm gonna make my land drops, right? I'm not cutting below 28 Ooh. lands for a reason, and yeah. now you're just kind of taking a dump all over them that way. For sure. Yeah. But yeah. um or hitting I'm, the rocks and stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm playing the deck because uh honestly I think this is um probably I would say like one of the top three stack stacks that there are right now. Um yeah. I think Winota is is the best as the current meta is resolved. Um I think it has potential to get even better even. Uh but uh, I think this deck is like one of the best stacks decks you can be playing uh, which again isn't saying much <laughs> right now i'll be honest no. um but it's a deck that i um believe i can catch a lot of people off with and have consistently done so in other games and other tournaments that i've been playing um, yeah garrett's garrett took this deck and had the most wins with it at our local scene so yeah I mean, our lgs and filled with blue, blue farm, farm and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much um, filled with blue yeah. farm yeah and like and me playing me playing rog silas uh and then we got alex actually so we'll yeah. go on to the next deck and alex is over here playing his uh vile storm uh, how are you how are you feeling about that one i'm feeling pretty good so i've made a few changes to the deck list after the last box masters i'm really always trying to like tinker with this and improve it a little bit more um okay. That's just kind of the nature of things when it's like a pet project and you don't have a lot of eyes on it like mm -hmm. other decks. I mean, when you when you have a player base like Blue Farm, you can refine things fairly quickly and understand which cards are right. going to have which strengths or weaknesses. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily have that luxury. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, you, that's why you end up seeing some weird cards like Dosin. Um, yeah, but I'm trying Dosin over Defense Grid. I, I think this is really cool. It's a... Uh essentially a harder thing to counter than defense grid and you're playing green you can also neoform it or do you play neoform or no i am not but part oh, okay. of the reason is for the worldly tutor access worldly tutor that's right okay yeah, yeah you i do, I do want to squeeze more equity out of these individual tutors right. at all stages of the game if you're splashing green you know you want to get the most out of it so correct yeah, that that makes sense. Um, and yeah, you've taken this deck to uh, you won uh, one of our local tournaments. Got a foil, old school planar chaos. I think was it diabolic intent. Yeah, I made a yeah. number of other top fours as well. Oh yeah, and you got another top like a multiple top Just, fours. Yeah. I had to win before that too to get that plateau. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, you've just been doing super well in this deck as yeah. well. You honestly would have made it to I was, the, uh, the league. I was finals. half a point away from the uh, finals. That's yeah, right. I yeah. was uh, kind of bummed about that. But... I feel like you've yeah. just been quietly like doing super well with this deck, and uh, like it's, it's. I've been improving slowly a lot with this. Yeah, which is super. It's nice. gotten much more refined. Much, much more refined. Uh, yeah, we yeah. you you included now. You still in library? You think you're going to keep that or? I th I think so. Okay. I, I do think like having yeah. the ability to drop it early, um, it, it's pretty powerful. Something I've okay. definitely noticed is if you're not playing out mana acceleration, whether that's uh, your mana rocks or some of your mana dorks, mm -hmm. uh, you you just never win those games. You don't win yeah. by like playing out your lands, and it it just does not work out. So I do like the ability to play out some of your fast mana and then also play something like Sylvan Library, trying to. Uh, trying to emulate the sort of play pattern with wheels right, uh, it's a little right. bit cheaper so you can get that online more often um and that's like currently the idea i was off it for a while because of you know you're only getting two cards per turn and you're kind of capped at that and the life loss is significant but i do want to keep trying this option yeah um i'm just for one i'm i'm really impressed with where you've been taking this list I as too. you've yeah, kind of been awesome. doing almost all the work by yourself uh, something that I'm really grateful for working on Rog Devesh is I've developed a little bit of a cult following. Uh, right. <laughs> I have a bunch of people who have been like helping me test out this deck and really like refine and um, like take it to where it is now. Um, but you've been you've been a hard trooper there. 
uh, holding down the fort, and uh, it's definitely paying off. Um, just... I was really touched yeah. at Mox Masters. One of my opponents recognized the deck I was playing. Oh, that's that right. was also that's cool. That was also the uh, game where everybody had a Thrasios the command zone, and uh, <laughs> oh, that's our, right. That's hilarious. Yeah, our our game went uh, seventy minutes into oh, turns wow. before it ended. Oh, uh, you think Stacks so, makes the game long? No, Tr Blue decks do. Triple Thrasios games. Yeah, mm -hmm. triple Thrasios. That games was an incredible game. End. That is pretty funny. Those are those are pretty funny, uh, pretty fun games. Um, let's see what what tips do you guys have uh, coming into Silicon Dynasty for someone you know like just signing up and just bringing the deck? Is there is there any tips you would give uh, John? Um, what is the time frame? Are, are we talking about like tips of in the during, tournament? Yeah, or like yeah, during during the tournament, maybe leading up to. You can throw in some stuff there, but mainly during the tournament. Um, during the tournament, I would just, um, uh, you know, try to, <clears throat> try to stay calm and, you know, remember, uh, your head on you and, uh, play with, you know, what you know and, um, always play to your outs and, um, really just like try to have a good time and kind of like set an yeah. environment where other people are enjoying it because something I've noticed with a lot of these things is um, just kind of like setting an environment like that means that people are often like less likely to I don't know do little things to maybe uh, like spite play you uh, right. <laughs> and you can like capitalize on little advantages yeah. by doing stuff like I, that yeah I'd say definitely um, don't take it like it, it's CDH which uh, yeah there's money on the line and you should be playing to your best ability but like at the end of the day like you're, you're there to play magic and have a good time with people and so just take it serious but like don't even when i'm playing yeah. modern or uh, legacy and stuff like even though it's like yeah it could be like the serious gp or whatever like this big event it's always good to be like the chill guy and just be like hey like yeah. oh cool like that that's fine and even if people are like weird or whatever like don't don't reciprocate that energy try to keep it light and yeah. just kind of but also i i just recommend to um i put it um just like think through your plays uh take yeah. a little bit of definitely take time your time if yeah. you need it um don't you know make them call wanna... the judge on you for slow play if you <laughs> if you really need the time uh, i was gonna say don't, take don't, it. yeah don't don't quite do that but uh don't try to forcefully know. slow play but no if you need i'm to not take saying to forcefully yeah. slow play but if you need the time on your turn don't feel threatened by opponents going yeah oh, hurry up right yeah right. no um you know take your time to really think because you know there's a lot of times in like casual play people let like let their misplays go and you can like take back stuff um don't expect to have any of that when you no, go into no, a tournament like this um because you won't so just make sure you're doing the right thing the first time um yeah. ask a judge look too. At your surroundings Something if you have any that questions I... yeah yeah um also Please feel comfortable calling judges if i cannot stress this enough it do you it feels awkward and uncomfortable at first if you have not played in a tournament environment before. Uh, we've kind of cut our teeth on 60-card yeah. formats Which doing is, this, but yeah. you need to just feel comfortable if you don't understand a ruling or if the, oh, there's a ruling gosh. that's, like, called into question. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to the judge. Don't, you know? don't feel like you're being an asshole for calling a judge, asking yeah. about stuff. It's completely normal. It's completely fine. Please do it. Um, you You will be happy that you did. Uh, you won't make enemies and uh, a lot of us cdh players um haven't had like nearly as much tournament exposure That's as true, yeah. players in other formats so we don't have like this kind of tournament etiquette uh down to quite the same extent um but yeah that's something i'd say and um what else was i gonna say uh i think I had so somebody else. Uh, oh, let me try to remember what I was going to say. I'll, it was something I'll else. Hop in. You can hop in, Alex. What, what, what's some yeah. tips you give? So we've gone over some of these uh, cycle. Well, I guess I can throw in one more thing on the psychological side of things. Um, in general, something I've seen at tournaments that happens sometimes is you know people will they'll finish a game early and they'll sit down. And they'll go, oh, you know, we have some time in the round. Do you want to play one for fun? 
I try not to do that these days, to be honest, um, because you only have so much uh, mental acuity or willpower or sharpness Especially throughout the day, and like, you don't want if, to wear yeah. that yourself down or dull your decisions for later on because yeah. you wanted to spend some time. I know you, it feels nice yeah. for downtime, but... Yep, uh, you might have six rounds in the day and all of them might be games that are going near to time where you really have to stretch your brain and you want to give yourself as much uh, as much of a break as you can. Like, it's fun um, to like play games in between rounds, but you want to give yourself a little bit of, of a break so you can kind of like refresh your mental state before in each game. Yeah, if, if you are playing a deck that can win quickly and you end up you know, winning turn two, and there's uh, <laughs> there's still 50 minutes in the round. Relax. Keep that burn player zen, okay? Don't. That's a real <laughs> advantage of other players. Don't squander it. Oh, the yeah. When you win really fast, yeah. Take take that time. Seriously. Go ahead. Go get something to eat. Yeah. Go get something uh, to drink. Tournament fatigue is 100. percent That that'll be definitely a tip that I want to throw in. Like, for tournament fatigue, it is real. During those like last crucial rounds where it's like, oh, this last game determines if I make it, it to top sixteen, too, yeah. and it gets super high stakes, and you're just like, ah, oh, so I just had like three rounds of just grinding and all this stuff. You know, it's like you you got to make sure to take your breaks when you when you can, and that is also a benefit that people don't talk about of playing decks that can win pretty quickly or decks that can yeah. just steal wins out of Make nowhere. Make your own breaks. Yeah, you can legitimately, having that downtime to just relax will sometimes win you tournaments. <laughs> uh, I love, love Crick for that. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you have decks that can win super fast and that's what you do and you don't have to play around too many stuff or you just have like uh well, i guess an easy tournament in a way um it's it's good i play living in modern and i i had that multiple times <laughs> where like i there was in swiss i felt like i didn't even play because i just like rolled and then i would get to like the top eight and i'm like oh cool like i get to like start playing like some yeah. legit matches and thinking about it because like some of the decks i just play against i'm like yeah i'm just rolling this <laughs> Uh, another quick tidbit of advice I want to give um, yeah. is something that I notice that happens a lot, especially for like newer players to the CDH tournament scene, is you get a lot of people who um, feel like the stakes of being in a tournament a little bit too much and stop mm -hmm. playing to win as much and play a little bit more safe. Uh, and we'll often, you'll often see people keep hands that are very mid and are like okay but like maybe aren't gonna win uh and mm -hmm. something you gotta like realize when you're going into this stuff is yeah i mean sometimes you're gonna lose the game because you mold a four and it sucks right um mm -hmm. but you have to um keeping i don't know like keeping that that six card hand that's like probably not gonna win but like you have i don't know a piece of interaction and like a arcane signet or something um oftentimes like people get trapped into t keeping these fair hands that are okay when you really should just be given the dice another roll um because yeah. if you're gonna want to make um if you're gonna want to like make it into the later rounds you need a little bit of luck on your side and you need to give yourself every opportunity to have some of that luck that you can right, right. yeah yeah, yeah. Mull mulling is probably the biggest difference between like really good players and great players is mulling heavily and mulling like knowing when to mull and like what hands to keep for your deck is probably going to be the biggest difference yeah. maker in terms and of games yeah yeah I'll, I'll see a lot of players that i know that are good um or are like are, are pretty decent um that like have a problem with like yeah playing a little bit too safe when it comes to the tournament when they know that like maybe a hand isn't great and they would like mull it in you know whatever game they're playing with their friends because they know but then you know they have like this idea that okay well is this going to work and you can like also tie this over to playing safe in terms of like plays that you make they're oftentimes where people just make like the much safer play when you really need to be playing for like these high upside plays a lot of the time not all the time um you know you can find at your own discretion uh when these moments are applicable but it is a pattern that i've noticed players often uh take when getting into tournaments yeah okay all right 
Oh, with that, I think we're good oh, to... I had one more point I wanted to make. Oh, you did? <laughs> All right, yeah, go ahead. Drag a little longer. No, 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 go ahead. So I kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier, but to just kind of bundle everything up. Um, also, going into tournament, understand that the way that you think and the way that your body feels, there is no separation between your mind and body, okay? If you're treating your body right, your body's, your mind is going to perform better. So make sure that you bring snacks and, and water, get enough to eat and drink, get some sleep the night before, and try to maintain <laughs> maintain a, a more relaxed state, you know, during the tournament. Don't get your blood pressure up constantly. Yeah. Um, I, I know it can be fun to, you know, go to, <laughs> go to the tournament and just, like, okay, let's just see what happens and not care about any of that. Okay, I mean, I've gone to tournaments where I've just had, like, four hours of sleep and I just got off of work <laughs> and I drank enough caffeine to where oh, my legs are mad, man. So I, I can understand that. Okay. Um, but in general, you're going to squeeze better performance out of your tournament run if you're following that advice and <laughs> you're just trying to uh, maintain even keel. Right. Get yourself pi pumped up with music or something beforehand. You know, that's yeah. good psychologically, but treat your body right. Okay, I said no, no, that was that was a good point. Yeah, treat treat yourself right. If you make it around two, don't uh, don't stay up uh, all night slamming sake bombs with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's what uh, it's unless, about, man. Unless unless you're doing it with hope of uh, gear. no, not hope. Sorry, Urza's liberator. liberator. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Unless you're unless you're liberating everyone with your colorless deck while, while you're while you're absolutely. Yes blasted oh, yeah. get trash That's, with your trash pile yeah and unless colin's literally trashing you with that deck then that's that's the only person that can do it he's 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 special <laughs> um all right we're gonna we're gonna end the podcast there and uh thank you guys for hopping in this is our first podcast so it was pretty fun and uh you guys have any last words nope just get your tithes while they're cheap Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, until next time. <laughs> yeah, see you guys. <laughs>